Tonight, saints, as I has already mentioned, is one of those nights where we have to do what God has purpose for us to do. Now, I know everybody may not understand this, but as a, as a preacher sent by Jesus Christ, we have to do as the Bible has appointed us to do. 2 Corinthians 20, chapter 4. And let me show you my place. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we're going to start reading at verse number 1. What did he say, twin? Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. Paul said, therefore, seeing we have this ministry. As we have received mercy. He said, we got this ministry through and by mercy. We faint not. Paul said, we faint not. What did he say? But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. We have done what? Renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. That's my job. My job is I have to renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. Things that has been done down through the years, dishonest. Men have gotten away with deceiving people. Well, the Lord sent me along, and I have, a, I have the word here that I've got to obey. I've got to renounce it. The hidden things renounce means to deny it, defy it, my God, manifest it, expose it, and condemn it. Right. Do you understand? I, that's my job. Right. My God, man, I have to manifest these things. Why? Because the people of God are being held in bondage by trickery, Amen. by games and gimmicks of men that has been ordained and sent by Satan with a message in their mouth to damn the people of God. Amen. And that's what I see taking place. And I've got to deal with it. Hallelujah to God. You know, if you, maybe God ain't sent you, but he put a, he put a, a, a burden down up in this preacher because I see, my God, the condition of the people. Now, I have received many emails. I've received many emails over a period of time from Bishop S.C. Johnson followers telling me that I misrepresent Bishop Johnson, that Bishop Johnson didn't say this, he didn't say that, he said this and he said that. Well, no problem. I've also received many emails from First Church, Geno's Falls, telling me the same thing. Pastor Genesis didn't say that. He didn't believe this. He don't believe that. He believed in the Son of God. He preached the Son of God. No problem. Well, tonight, we're not going to go by hearsay. We're going to go by the writings of these men themselves. We're going to read their books. And we're going to compare their books with the book. And we're going to see which book is right. That, now that, you, I don't think we can be more fair than that. Because I see the condition of the people and you're being deceived. Because you're being turned away from salvation. That's, what, that's what's taking place. Now, I have a book here written. I'm going to ask the camera to zoom in. I have a book here written. The first one is written by Bishop S.C. Johnson. The name of this book, the title of this book, Is Jesus Christ the Son of God Now? By Bishop S.C. Johnson. Is Jesus Christ the Son of God Now? By Bishop S.C. Johnson. I have another one here. Title of it, The Mystery of the Godhead. Written by Pastor Geno Jennings. The Mystery of the Godhead. Written by Pastor Geno Jennings. So now look here. We're not going to make up anything. We're going to show you what's written in these men's books. S.C. Johnson's book. Is Jesus Christ the Son of God now? Pastor Jennings' book. The Mystery of the Godhead. Now. For you that may not know who Bishop S.C. Johnson was, Bishop Johnson was an apostolic faith preacher, very well known back in the 50s, early 60s. The man preached a lot of truth. I give credit where it's due. He preached a lot of truth. But he got exalted. He got arrogant. He got high-minded. He got beside himself. And for that cause, the Lord allowed him to be deceived. In his latter days, 
his message began to be more and more about himself and not about Jesus Christ. He got so off course until he denied the existence of the Son of God and said the Son of God don't live no more. He deceived many people because they was caught up in S.C. Johnson. Saints, let me tell y'all something. They were so caught up into this man until when he died, the followers went to the grave site. They went to his grave. They declared in three days Johnson was going to rise from the dead. Do y'all hear the preacher? They was just that deceived. Fifty some years later, he hadn't got up yet. And he's not going to get up until the one that I'm preaching might God call him from the grave. But now think about the deception. They're around the grave waiting on Johnson to rise. They think he can rise. But the son of God who did rise, they say he did rise. It's deception. Do you understand? But so many idolize this man across the nation. Your apostolic faith preachers, they imitated him. They idolized him. They exalted him. They studied Johnson, my God, man, to a T. And they come out, want to be like S.E. Johnson. Pastor Genesis is no different. He studied Johnson. He studied Johnson. He wanted to be like Johnson. Try to talk like Johnson. Some said, well, he, he got Johnson's spirit. Well, he studied Johnson, no doubt. He probably do have his spirit. That's right. That's right. But having Johnson's spirit is nothing to boast about. Amen. You need to have the spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. Not the spirit of Johnson. Do you understand? I don't want Johnson's spirit. I want the spirit of Christ. Johnson's spirit can't save you. You're going to need the spirit of Christ to get you out the grave, not the spirit of Johnson. Amen. So to try to sound like and imitate Johnson is a waste of time. Amen. Now we're going to read some of Johnson's writings. And we're going to read some of Jenny's writings. Now I want you to understand you will find out clearly, you will be able to see clearly that as I say how they idolized Johnson, you're going to see how Jenny's book that he wrote, he patterned it, he copied right from Johnson's book. It's going to be clearly seen. They idolized this man. Now listen to Johnson's book. Page three, first paragraph. Now listen to this. Johnson writes, now all this writing it's against the Son of God, Jesus Christ. This is what these so-called men of God, preachers, took the time to write books against Jesus. Now, this, the books are against Jesus now, against the Son of God. But this is what many of the followers around the world are caught up in. I'm doing this tonight to try to help you. Page 3, S.C. Johnson book, top of the Top paragraph, he writes, in Matthew 27, 54, we read, truly, this was the Son of God. Was. He's taking the word was to say the Son is no more. Now, he's he taking the word was here and trying to make was mean he, he don't exist no more because it said was the Son of God. That's what he's doing. Johnson did that. Page three, first paragraph. Jennings, page 26. Last paragraph. In his book, he writes, the Bible said, truly, this was the Son of God. Matthew 27, 54. Anything that was, had been, or is past tense. Listen now. Anything that was, had been or past tense. So the Bible said truly this was the son of God. They're taking that to mean he don't exist no more. 
Brothers and sisters, that's not what the scriptures say. That's not what this Bible is saying. And I'm coming back to Matthew and I'm going to explain it. God be my helper. But let's get the other writings just to show you Genesis copied his book behind Johnson. This is who they idolized right here. And Genesis was no different. Page 3 Johnson's book, middle paragraph. He writes, I contend that there never was a son in heaven. The son didn't go to heaven. Neither did he come from heaven. The son of God did not rise from the dead. The sonship started in the womb of Mary and ended on the cross. This is supposed to be an apostle, y'all. This is Johnson's book, page 3, middle paragraph. Jennings' book, page 26, middle paragraph. Geno writes, there never was no son of God in heaven. No son of God came from heaven. No son of God went to the grave. No son of God went back to heaven. And there's no son of God coming for the church at the end. Do, do, you, do you hear this? This is foolishness. Do you understand? Now think about it. If this is what you believe, brothers and sisters, if this is what you believe, you're going to be lost now. Because the son of God was sent for your salvation. But they saying he don't exist no more. Now these men are supposed to be apostles. All right. Johnson's book, page 24. Better yet, page 4. Johnson's book, page 4. Top paragraph. Johnson writes. Johnson writes. The eternal spirit which filled that body filled heaven, filled hell, and filled every place. He was the father of the body that he was in. This makes my statement true. The body did not start in heaven. The sonship did not start in heaven. But it started in the womb of Mary and ended on the cross. Sonship, he said, started in the womb of Mary and ended on the cross. For when he died, he said, it's finished. It's finished. Now he's taking this to say, when Jesus died, Jesus said, it's finished. He's taking that to mean Jesus was done. He was finished. No more son of God. That's not what that means now. That's not what that means now. No, we're going to come back and we're going to deal with it's finished. But let me show you Jenny's book. He writes the same thing. Just showing you now, he copied Johnson's book. Page 26, Jenny's book. Middle paragraph. Jenny's writes, when God took on flesh and blood, he became a son. Before then, he had no son. When he shed blood, that ended the son. Because he himself said, it's finished. I mean, anybody can see where Genesis got his information from. Straight from this foolishness right here. They idolize this man, and therefore they have error just like this man. If they had studied Jesus the way they studied Johnson, their doctrine would be correct. But they studied the wrong man. Page 4, middle paragraph, Johnson writes, All those that believe he is the Son of God now put him in a very ignorant position. Jennings writes, page 27, top paragraph. If Jesus Christ is the Son of God now, that will put him in an, in an ignorant position. The same thing. You, you, you copying another man's book and want to say you got it from God. Johnson didn't get it from God and Jennings didn't get it from God. Amen. Johnson got it out of hell and Jennings got it from Johnson and it came out of hell. That's where it came from. This doctrine here is not of God. Do not die believing this foolishness. Don't die believing this. Now let's back up. I, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna take my time and I wanna teach this stuff. I wanna deal with it. 
They got Matthew 27, 54. Truly this was the Son of God. Was. Give me Matthew 27, 20. And I want to start at verse 51. And let's see what is this talking about. Let's see, are they taking the word was in Scripture to try to make that mean the Son is no more? Matthew 27, start at verse 51. What did it say, twin? Matthew 27, 51. Now remember, the people did not believe that Jesus was the Son of God. When he was here on the scene, they were asking who he was. And he would let him, them know he was the Son of God. And they did not believe that. Matthew 27, 51 said what? And behold. And behold. The veil of the temple was rent in twain. The ve- this is, they crucifying Jesus now. The veil of the temple by God, man, was, what happened? Was rent in twain. It was rent in twain. From the top to the bottom. From the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake. The earth did quake. And the rocks rent. The rocks rent. And the graves were open. All this taking place, my God, man, while they're crucifying Jesus. The, the, and what happened to the graves? And the graves were open. The graves were open. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Many bodies of the saints slept. That slept, the Bible said, they arose. And what happened? And many bodies of the saints which slept arose. The Bible said which slept arose. And came out of the graves after his resurrection. They came out of the grave after Jesus' resurrection. And what happened? And went into the holy city. And what happened? And appeared unto many. And what happened? Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus, when they that was with him watching Jesus, saw the earthquake, they saw all this activity, the earthquake, and those things that were done, and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, they, they was afraid, they feared greatly, and what did they say? Truly this was the Son of God. Right. Do you hear how that read? They didn't initially believe it. They didn't believe it. But after they saw the earthquake, the rocks rent, Michael, they saw all this activity, they said, that was the Son of God. He's telling the truth. He was the Son of God. He is the Son of God. But initially, they didn't believe it. But these brothers that wrote books using the word was as if it meant he is no more. That's not what this scripture meant. That is called deception. Amen. It's called deception. Something to deceive you. Do you understand? That's what it is. Genesis writes, anything that was is past tense. Okay, meaning it is no more. Okay, if you want to play word games because it said truly this man was, give me Saint jo- give me all Acts 8.37, Twain. Give me Acts chapter 8 and at verse 37. If we're going to play word games because it said was, Acts 8.37 said what? And Philip said. What did Philip say? If thou believest with all thine heart. If thou believest with all thy heart. Thou mayest. Thou mayest. And he answered and said. What did he say? I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Is? Is the Son of God. Was. Is the Son of God. Was. Is. If you want to play a word game, every time you read words, I can match it with a is. That's a word game. That's all that is. When the Bible said was, it wasn't saying it from the standpoint of these, like these brothers, meaning he is no more. That's not what that meant. Acts 9, 20, brother. Acts 9 and at verse 20. What did it say, twin? And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue. Straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue that what? That he is the Son of God. Was the Son of God. He is the Son of God. Amen. That's a word game. Every time, give me 1 John 4 15. How many you want? How many years you want? Do you understand? 1 John 4 15 said what? Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Read it, twin. God dwelleth in him. And what? And he in God. He is the son of God. So when the brothers taught this foolishness, wrote this foolishness, because it said was, meaning he is no more, that's deception. That's clear cut deception is all that is. Amen. All right. Johnson book. Johnson goes on to say, he writes, in Acts 9.20, 
He preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the son of God. He write, Paul was speaking of what had been. He said Paul was speaking of what had been. Give me Acts 9 20. And when you get to that scripture where it says he was he was talking about that what had been, I want you to read it twice and read it loud. Acts 9 20. Read that, brother. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue. That he is the Son of God. Continue to read. But all that heard Paul, him. Read verse 20 again. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue. That what? That he is the Son of God. Did you overlook that part where he was talking about that that had been? What verse is that? No, sir. So it's not there? No, sir. So that's not there. But Johnson said that. Proverbs 30 and 6. Proverbs chapter 30 and that verse 6. What did it say, twin? Add thou not unto his words. Add thou not unto his words. Lest he reprove thee. Lest he reprove you. And thou be found a liar. That's what's taking place. You add it to the word. All of you all that believe, Johnson added, y'all believe his doctrine, now you're adding, the word is reproving you and finding all of you to be liars. Because the Bible ain't saying what Johnson said here. How can you take that verse to say, well, it's talking about that that had been, just because you don't agree with the verse? I, if, look, I can take that verse and use it everywhere in the Bible. I can say, well, you know, he called them those things which be not, because we're going to get to that in a minute. Anytime they read a scripture that, dis that, that, that condemns their doctrine, then they will say one of two things. He calling those things which be not as though it, as though it is. Or he's speaking on that that had been, but he is no more. But when they say that, you can't read that. They have to throw that in to try to justify their doctrine. Brothers and sisters, it's just not there. Believe what we can read out of this book. These two books here, this trash here. This trash. Do you understand? The sisters here can use this to, to sweep the trash on To throw in the trash can. Now, don't, don't throw these away because I, I, I need to hold these for evidence. <laughs> I, I need to hold these because I've been accused of misrepresenting these brothers. I know what they believe, but they, they followers write me and tell me that I misrepresent them. They believe this. They believe that. I got an email just a week or two ago telling me Jennings believed the son of God. He preached the son of God. If he believed and preached the son of God, why would he write trash like this? Why? Why? That makes no sense. Do you understand? Johnson goes on to say, in Acts 9 20, he preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the Son of God. Paul was speaking on what had been. The eunuch said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. This is speaking on things that were not as though they were. this scripture where the eunuch said I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God how do you conclude this is speaking on things that were not as though they were this is per deception this is per deception he goes on to say there is no scripture in the Bible that says Jesus Christ is the son of God now Johnson writes, I repeat, now he got it in bold print. There is no scripture in the Bible that says Jesus Christ is the son of God now. I defy the entire world to produce Bible for such a statement. He said, there is none. Give me Hebrew 4.14. Give me Hebrew 4.14. It's very simple. It's not hard and it's not complicated. 
Hebrew 4.14 said what? Seeing then that we have a great high priest. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that done what? That is passed into the heavens. Where did the high priest pass? Pass into the heavens. Where did the high priest pass? That is passed into the heavens. Who is it? Jesus, the Son of God. Our high priest passed into the heavens. That is Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. You say it's no verse, no chapter, no. The Bible said our high priest passed into the heavens. He's there now. He's there right now. He's there right now. He passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God. This is sad. This is real sad. Johnson goes on to say, remember, he had the power to lay down his life and to take it again. He said, no man takes it from me. I lay it down of myself. He goes on to say, it is true that the Son of God does not exist anywhere now. Listen, it is true, he writes, that the Son of God does not exist anywhere now. Jesus Christ was the Son of God when he was here in the flesh. There is no scriptural proof that he was the Son of God anywhere else but here. If he was, I want you to give Bible chapter and verse to prove it. I want Hebrew 414. I want Acts 755. And I want 1 Thessalonians 1 and verse 9. Hebrew 414 again, twin. Seeing then that we have a great high priest. That passed where? That has passed into the heavens. Who is it? Jesus, the Son of God. All right, saints. The scripture got Jesus, the Son of God, passing into heavens. Passing into the heavens. Is that correct? Scripture got him passing into heaven. Passing right into the heavens. Give me Acts chapter 7 and at verse 55. Now the scripture got him passing into the heavens. Acts 7 55. What did it say twin? But he. Stephen. Being full of the Holy Ghost. Stephen full of the Holy Ghost. Looked up steadfastly into heaven. Where did he look? Steadfastly into heaven. So he looked right into heaven and what happened? And saw the glory of God. He saw God, God's glory. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Amen. So Hebrews got him passing into the heavens. You got a man full of the Holy Ghost. Full of God's spirit. Looking right into the heavens. And he see the one in heaven that Hebrews said passed into heaven. Stephen's looking at it. He said I see the glory of God. And Jesus doing what? Standing on the right hand of God. What did he say, twin? And said. What did he say? Behold. Behold. I see the heavens open. I see the heavens open. And the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. <laughs> Is that plain? Is it? Y'all, if it's me, y'all tell me it's me. But if it's plain, just tell me it's plain. Amen. Do you understand? There's nothing you can do with this. This is what the Bible said. These, brothers and sisters, these men were and is deceivers. I beseech the saints, don't believe this junk. Don't you depart this life believing this junk. I'm telling you now. All right, Hebrews got it passing into heaven. You got Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost, looking into heaven. He see him right into heaven. Now, 1 Thessalonians 1, and at verse 9, twin, 1 Thessalonians 1, and at verse 9. Now, stay with me. What did it say, twin? For they themselves show of us. What? What manner of entering in we had unto you. And what happened? And how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. You turned to God from idols to serve who? The living and true God. And what? And to wait for his son from heaven. Amen. 
Wait for who from heaven? His son from heaven. So now wait a minute. Y'all help me here now. Wait a minute. Hebrews got him going into heaven. Seventh chapter of the book of Acts, Stephen see him in heaven. And Paul said, wait on him to come from heaven. Amen. Scripture got him going into heaven. Stephen see him in heaven. Paul said, wait on him to come from heaven. But you got fellows, my God saying he ain't in heaven. And never went to heaven. The Bible said, let God be true. And every man a liar. Amen. This stuff, my God, is nothing but lies. Designed to damn you if you believe it. And let me tell you something. I've held my peace for a long time. We, we, we've dotted around and dotted around. But let me tell you something. We're calling a spade a spade now. Because it's time out for this foolishness. The Son of God was sent here for your salvation. And if you die not believing in the Son of God, you're going to hell for sure. Plain, simple, cut and dry, you're going to hell if you don't believe that the Son of God is alive in heaven right now and is coming back at the end. Amen. Amen. Peter said, neither is there salvation in any other. Right. He said, there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we can, must be saved. It's all in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not in your pastor. Right. Amen. It's in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to God. Johnson goes on to say, page four, bottom paragraph, Jesus Christ is not the son now. He is the father. He's the father. Now I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people will think, well, that's not a big deal. That is a big deal. Because your salvation is not just based on you believing in the father. Your salvation is based on you believing in the one that the Father sent, and that's his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave. Amen. His only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, you can have eternal life. That's right. You got to believe in the son. Amen. You got to believe in the Father as much as you want. You'll go to hell believing in the Father. Amen. Your salvation is based on you believing in the son of God. The Son of God. Your salvation is in the Son of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ, Johnson Wright, is not the Son now. He is the Father. There is no Son in heaven to come. There never was a Son in heaven and never will be. When he ceased to be the Son on the cross, he went back to what he was before he was the Son, and that is Father. He went back to being a spirit. That is what it meant when he said, I go to my father. Really? Really? That's foolishness. That's clear cut foolishness is what that is. So he said he, he, that basically it was a spirit that rose. Jen is going to say the same thing. Jen is book. Page 22 at the bottom. Bottom paragraph, Jenin writes, The spirit got in that body that was dead and glorified it. He turned it into spirit. So the body was turned into a spirit. This is what Gino writes. The body was turned into a spirit. Give me Luke 24, 36, bro. Give me Luke 24, 36. And all thy get to get an understanding. Luke 24, 36 said what? And as they thus spake. What happened, brother? Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. And what did he say? And saith unto them. What did Jesus say? Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted. They was terrified and affrighted. And, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Wait a minute, saints. They say he was turned into his spirit. The Bible said they suppose, they thought, Amen. they thought they had seen a spirit. The brothers are saying he was a spirit. The Bible said they suppose they had seen a spirit. What did it say, twin? 
And he said unto them, What did he say? Why are you troubled? Why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your heart? Why do thoughts arise in your heart? Behold my hands and my feet. Jesus said, Look at my hands and my feet. That it is I myself. He said, It is me. It is I myself. Handle me and see. Handle me and see. For a spirit have not flesh and bones as ye see me have. Now, should we believe this or should we believe this? Which book should we believe? The Bible is right. Amen. You saying that he was a spirit. Jesus just let you know I'm not a spirit. He let you know I'm not a spirit. He said, behold, meaning look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Handle me and see a spirit have not flesh and bone as you see me have. This is after he got out the grave. That's after the resurrection. And what they was looking at when he told them that I'm not a spirit, I'm flesh and bone, that is what went right back up into the heavens. Right. Amen. Drop down to verse 50, twin. Drop down to verse 50, Luke 24, that verse 50. What did it say? And he led them out as far as to Bethany. Jesus led them. Now look now. He done showed his hands and his feet and said, it is I myself, I'm not a spirit. Handle me and see. Spirit don't have flesh and bone as you see me have. Verse 50 said he led them out as far as to Bethany. What happened? And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. He lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass. It came to pass. While he blessed them. While he blessed them. He was parted from them. And where did he go? And carried up into heaven. Carried what? Carried up into heaven. You know what? I say to the, all the followers of this doctrine, you can follow it. That's between you and God. But one thing for sure, my job is to make sure you see what you follow. Amen. Paul said, make all men see. My job is to show you the scripture so you can see what you follow. If you want to follow it, go ahead. But you're going to follow it by the help of God with your eyes wide open. You see, because God is justified when he allow you to hear his word. The Bible says, have not they heard? He's not going to hog tie you and make you believe it. What if some did not believe? Shall the unbelief make the faith of God without effect? The Bible said, God forbid. Yea, let God be true. And every man a liar. So you don't have to believe it, but I got to teach it to you. You see, I'm teaching it so I can save money. It's up to you what you do with it, but I got to deliver it to you. Johnson and Jennings both use the scripture, it's finished. When the Bible declared, it's finished. Now, they took that scripture to try to make it mean the Son of God was done. Over. No more. But let's see what it's finished really mean. Let, let, let's see what it means. Let's see does it mean what they're saying or let's, let, let's get the meaning from the scripture it's finished. Matthew brother 19. And start reading around about verse 30. Matthew 19 and 30. What did it say? But many that are first. Read it. Shall be last. Read it. And the last shall be first. All right. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man. All right. That is an householder. Read it. Which went out early in the morning to hire laborers. I want John 19 and 30. That's what I want. Give me John 19 and 30. Read the scripture. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar. This is Jesus upon the cross. The Bible said when he had received the vinegar, what happened? He said. What did he say? It is finished. Jesus said what? It is finished. Brothers and sisters, does this mean that he was finished? Did it say he was finished? What, what did it say, twin? It is finished. No, he finished. It is finished. No, he finished. It is finished. I, I want y'all to get this now. They took that scripture, Jennings and Johnson, when the Bible said, it's finished, 
trying to make it mean he was finished. Let me, let me show you something. When the Bible says it's finished, the father gave the son some work to do. Amen. Y'all hear Brother Murray? The father gave the son some work to do. Gave him a job that he had to go and complete. Do, do y'all hear Brother Murray? Brother, give me St. John 9 and 4. Give me St. John 9 and that verse 4. What did it say, twin? I must work the works of him that sent me. Oh, hold on a minute. <laughs> I must do what? Work the works of him that sent me. Jesus is saying, I was sent here to do some work. I must work the works of him that sent me. Somebody sent me to do some work, the Son of God said. I was sent here to do some work. What was the work he was sent here to do? Give me Luke, brother, 24, 44. Give me Luke 24 and that verse 44. What was the work that he was sent here to do? Luke 24 and 44. What did it say, twin? And he said unto them. What did Jesus say? These are the words which I spake unto you. That what? While I was yet with you. While I was yet with you. That all things must be fulfilled. All things must be what? Be fulfilled. Read it, twin. Which were written in the law of Moses. I want y'all to hear this now. I must work the works of him that sent me. All things must be fulfilled. In other words, I got this work to do. I got to do the work of him that sent me. All things must be fulfilled, which was what? Which were written in the law of Moses. Read it. And in the prophets. Read it. And in the Psalms. Concerning who? Concerning me. So all this stuff that was written concerning me, I got to do it. I got some work to do. The Father sent me here to do this work. I got to fulfill all that was written in the law of Moses. And in the prophets and in the Psalms, he said, because it's concerning me. I got to do it. Hallelujah. My God, man, Hebrew 10, 7, 20. He said, I got to do it because it's written to me. I got to do it. Hallelujah to God. My God, man, Hebrew chapter 10. And at verse 7, what did he say to him? Then said I. What you said? Lo. Lo. I come in the yes, volume sir. of the book. Oh, hold it a minute. Yes, All that was written in the law of Moses in the prophets concerning me, I got to fulfill it. Verse 5, twin. 10, 5 Hebrews. What did it say? Well, for when he cometh into, into the world. When he came into the world. He said. What did he say? Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Jesus got here. My God to let you know sacrifice and offering. The Father don't want that. He's tired of these animals, these turtle doves, these heifers. Uh, he's tired of you killing all these animals. He would if not. Don't want that no more. What did he say, twin? But a body has thou prepared me. Tired of all these sacrifices, but a body he done prepared me. Somebody declaring that a body has been prepared for them. When did the father prepare a body for the son of God? When the angel Gabriel went to Mary. And told Mary, you're going to birth a child. Mary declared, how can this be? I don't know no man. The angel Gabriel said, the power of the highest yes, shall overshadow thee. And that holy fame which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Right. What's taking place? The Father is preparing him a body. Yes. Hear me talking now. The Father preparing him a body. That thing was done by the power of the highest. Yes. Hallelujah to God. Go back to Hebrew, Hebrew 10. My God, continue to read, twin. What did he say? In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. He have no pleasure in that. Then said I. What did he say? Lo, I come. Here he come now. Yes, sir. Here, here come Jesus. Here he, come. he said, lo, I come. Yes, read it, twin. In the volume of the book. Lo, hold it. In the volume. The volume. All the book. I'm coming in the volume of the book. All of it. Read it, twin. In the volume of the book, it is written to me. It's written to me? It is written to me. To do what? To do thy will, O God. Do thy will, do your works. Do your works. So the Father gave the Son some work to do. 
Watch Jesus. When he getting he look here. When if he when when he coming to the end here, and he's about done doing all that the Father told him to do. Give me Saint John seventeen and one, brother. Saint John seventeen and at verse one. What did it say, twin? These words spake Jesus. These words spake Jesus. And lifted up his eyes to heaven and said. Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said what? Father. Why is Jesus looking up to heaven and saying father? If you're telling me the son is the father, shouldn't he be looking in a mirror and saying father? <laughs> Seems like he should have a mirror there saying father. But the Bible said he looked up toward heaven and said, Father. What did he say, twin? And lifted up his eyes to heaven and said. What did he say? Father. Father. The hour is come. The hour is come. Glorify thy son. Yes, Glorify who? Glorify thy son. Glorify thy son. That thy son also may glorify thee. Do you see a distinction there? Glorify your son where your son may glorify you. What you say, twin? As thou hast given him power over all flesh. Father, you gave me power over all flesh. What did he say, twin? That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. What did he say, twin? And this is life eternal. This is life eternal? That they might know thee, the only true God. And who? And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. That they may know you, the only true God, talking about the Father, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent. Read it, twin. I have glorified thee on the earth. I done glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. <laughs> you, you did what? I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Finish? Finish. You, you, you know that work my God the Father gave me to do? Jesus praying, not telling the Father, Father, I, I've done what you told me to do. I finished the work that thou hast given me to do. Now go back to John now, brother. Now read it with understanding. Jesus is up on the cross now, my God, man, and he's fixing to sum it up by saying, it's finished. John 19 and that verse 30, what did it say? When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar. On the cross when he received the vinegar. He said. What did he say? It is finished. It's finished, man. I've done what you told me to do in the earth. Saints of God. Saints, 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 saints. Now, look. When he said it's finished, he's talking about the work he had to do in the earth. Amen. Don't you let that go over your head. He's talking about the work he had to do in the earth. That was finished. Amen. Not he's finished, it's finished. What's finished? The work you gave me to do in the earth. Amen. His job is not complete yet. No, sir. His earthly job, the work the Father gave him to do, walking around here physically in the flesh, I'm finished. Okay. I've done that. John 19 and 30 again said what? When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar. What did he say? He said. What did he say? It is finished. Go back to John 17 and 5. Uh, there's something there I want you to see. John 17 and start at verse 5. What did it say, twin? And now, O Father. Now, Father. Glorify thou me with thine own self. Read it. With the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Read it. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou hast gave me. Read it. Out of the world. Out of the world? Amen. Out of the world. Out of the world. So, so the ones you gave me out of the world, I done manifest your name to them. And what else? Thine they were. Thine they were. And thou gavest them me. Verse 3, twin. 17 and 3. What did it say? And this is life eternal. That what? That they might know thee, the only true God. Read it. And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Read it, twin. I have glorified thee on the earth. On the earth. This is what I want. This is what, this is what I want. He's talking about what he had to do in the earth. Amen. I finished the work you gave me to do in the earth, in the world. But that don't mean his job was complete. Amen. Because Jesus, the Son of God, is still working. Amen. 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 Do, 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 you, do you get me? Yes. Now, 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 look now. Look, look, look now. Look. For them that, that said, he said it's finished, that means that he came to an end. No, 
That means his work in the earth was finished. But now let me show you he's still working. Hebrews 7, 22. Let me show you he's still working now. Hebrews chapter 7 and at verse 22. Let's see what kind of work he's doing and where he's doing that work at. Now his work in the earth physically is finished. But Hebrews 7, 22 said what? By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Jesus was made a surety of a better testament. And they truly were many priests. There truly were many priests. Because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. The priests couldn't continue because the priests had to die. But what, brother? But this man. What you say about this man? Because he continueth ever. What you say about it? Have an unchangeable priesthood. And what you say about it? But this man, because he have it, but because he continueth ever. How long he continue? Ever. What he got? Have an unchangeable priesthood. What is he doing? Wherefore he is able also to save them. Wait a minute. He's able to do what to them? Save them. Sound like to me he's still working. He's able to do what to them? Save them. That do what? To the uttermost that come unto God by him. So he's still working. What is he doing? Saving. Them that come to God by him. Seeing he do what? Seeing he ever liveth. To make intercession for them. Yes, sir. He's still working. Amen. The Bible said it's finished. Then to me he's finished. No, it. The work the father gave him to do on the earth. is finished. Not the son. The son's still working. Amen. Romans 8.34 brother. The son of God is still working brothers and sisters. And you better thank God he's working. Oh, look, look at the preachers who preach this job. You better thank God he's working. Romans 8 34 said what? Who is he that condemned? Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. And what else? Who is even at the right hand of God? What is he doing? Who also maketh intercession for us. Amen. Sound like to me, he's still working. He's still interceding. He's still making intercession. The Bible said for us. So when the scripture said it's finished, he was done with the work that the Father gave him to do here in the earth, physically, walking around. He came here to fulfill all that was written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. He had to fulfill all of that. He went to the cross and died. When he was on the cross, he said, it's finished. I've done what the Father told me to do. He didn't say, I'm finished. He said, it's finished. What I had to do in the earth is done. Then he had to go on into heaven and continue to work as an intercessor, as a mediator for you and I. Do you remember Paul came along in 1 Timothy 2, 5 after Jesus had been put to death and said there is one God and, and one mediator between God and man? He said, is that man, Christ Jesus? That man is still working as a mediator for you and I. Saints, don't die believing this junk. Jenny's book, page 27, he writes, Another thing the carnal mind can't understand is when Stephen was being stoned in Acts 7 56 and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Jen is right. Fools think that Stephen saw Jesus standing on the right hand of someone else. He said, Fools think that. <laughs> Lord have mercy. That's all I can say. He said, of course that's not the truth. Right hand meant power. And right hand meant majesty. In Mark 14, 62, and Jesus said, I am. And you shall see the Son of Man standing on the right hand of power. And coming in the clouds of heaven. Listen to this, y'all. When Stephen saw Jesus Christ, he saw God standing in the power of his might. So, oh, give me that twin. Give me Acts. I'm going to see if I find that right there. We got to find that somewhere in Acts, bro. Sem, start at verse 55. Let's see what the Bible said that Stephen saw. Acts 7, 55. What did it say? But he being full of the Holy Ghost. Stephen full of the Holy Ghost. Looked up steadfastly into heaven. And what happened? And saw the glory of God. And what? And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. He saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing where? On the right hand of God. No, he saw God standing in the power of his might. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. 
He saw God standing in the power of his might, twin. Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Where that power of the might at? What, what verse is that? It ain't in there. <laughs> the Bible said, let God be true. And every man a liar. Amen. These men are liars. These books was written by the spirit of Antichrist. Right. Amen. Right. You may not want to call it for what it is. But these men was inspired by the spirit of Antichrist. Because this is against Christ. He goes on to say, there's only one on the throne, according to Revelation 4.2. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. I say amen to that. There was one on the throne. But look here, there was one on the throne, but there was one also that came to the one that was on the throne. Look here. There was one on the throne, that's true. But don't overlook the one that came to the one that was on the throne. Amen. You see, you want to acknowledge the one on the throne, but you don't want to acknowledge the one that came to the one that was on the throne. Right. Revelation 4, brother, let's get the scripture. Start at verse 1, twin. Revelation 4, 1. What did it say? After this I looked. I looked. And behold, a door was opened in heaven. And what you see? And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet. Read it. Talking with me. And what is that? Which said. What is that? Come up hither. Come up hither. I will show thee things which must be hereafter. What is that? And immediately I was in the spirit. Immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. And how many was on it? And one sat on the throne. I say amen. Right there. Right there, the Bible said it was one on the throne. That's what that say right there. Amen. I say amen. amen. But now can you say amen to Revelation 3.21? Let's see, can we say amen? We got to say amen to both scripture. Amen. Revelation 3.21 said what? To him that overcometh. Jesus said to him that overcometh. Will I grant to sit with me in my throne? Will I grant to sit with me in my throne? Even as I also overcame. And what? And I'm set down with my father in his throne. Which scripture do we say amen to? Can, can we say amen to both of them? He said, I overcame and I'm sat down with my father in his, throne, in, in his throne. But now, he said, him that overcome it. Do you know who it is that's going to overcome? Do, do you know who that is that's going to overcome? 1 John 5 and 5. 1 John 5 to start at verse 3. Who is it that's going to overcome? 1 John 5 and 3 said what? For this is the love of God. That what? That we keep his commandments. And what is that? And his commandments are not grievous. First John 5 and verse 5. What did it say? Who is he that overcometh the world? Who is he that overcometh the world? What did he say? But he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God. Amen. Jesus said the one that overcome, you will be able to sit down with me in my father's throne as I overcame and sat with my father in his throne. He said, but in order for you to overcome, the ones that's going to overcome are the ones who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. That's what I read. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. Go back to Revelation, brother. Chapter 4, verse 2, straight to the point. What did it say? And immediately I was in the Spirit. Immediately I was in the Spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. And what happened? And one sat on the throne. And what? And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper. And a sardine stone. No problem. Right there you got the father alone on the throne. But give me Revelation 5 and 1. And let's see who's going to come to the father while he's on the throne. Revelation 5 and 1 twin said what? And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. What did the one on the throne have in his right hand? A book written within and on the backside. Sealed with seven seals. So he had a book written. And the Bible said it was sealed with seven seals. He had a book written. He had a book written, y'all. What's in a book? Words. Amen. Words is in a book. Do you understand? What did Jesus say? Jesus said, lo, I come in the volume of the book. Amen. Do you understand? Saints of God, this is, look, this is the book right here. Jesus came in the volume of the book. This book is about Jesus. All this book is pointing straight to Jesus Christ. 
Do you understand? So the book being taken out of the father's hand, that's the word, my God, man, that the father later made flesh. The Bible said the word was made flesh. Jesus took it out of his hand. In other words, I got it. I came to fulfill this. He came to fulfill the book that was in the father's hand. That's why he going to go to the father and take the book out of his hand. Revelation 5 and 1 said what? And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. What you see, brother? A book written within and on the backside. And what he said? Sealed with seven seals. And what he said, brother? And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. And what he said? Who is worthy to open the book? Who is worthy to open the book? And to loose the seals thereof. Who's qualified to open this book and loose the seals thereof? What did he say, twin? And no man in heaven. No man in heaven? Nor in earth. What is that? Neither under the earth. Was what? Was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. What did he say, brother? And I wept much. I wept wept much? Because no man was found worthy to open the book. What did he say, son? To open and to read the book. Read it. Neither to look thereon. And what did he say, twin? And one of the elders said unto me. What did one of the elders say? Weep not. John, don't cry. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yes, sir. John, don't cry. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. The Bible said it is quite evident our Lord sprang out of Judah. There's a lion coming out of the tribe of Judah. That's Jesus. That's the Son of God. Amen. What did he say, son? Weep not. Don't cry, John. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. What? The root of David. The root of David? Have prevailed to open the book. Read it, twin. And to loose the seven seals thereof. What did he say, son? And I beheld. I beheld. And lo. And lo. In the midst of the throne. What happened? And of the four beasts. What did it look like? And in the midst of the elders. What happened? Stood a lamb. A lamb? John saw Jesus come in and said, Behold the Lamb of God. But you got a lamb now around the throne of God. And what did it say, twin? As it had been slain. Look like that lamb had been, that lamb had been slain. Had been slain. What did it say, twin? Having seven horns and seven eyes. What did it say, son? Which are the seven spirits of God. What it Send forth into all the earth. Read it, son. And he came. And he came. And took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. It's no problem right here that was one on the throne. But read all of it. Who is this coming to the one on the throne and taking the book out of his hand? Who is that? Jesus. Who is that? Jesus. Amen. What did he say, Twain? And when he had taken the book. When he took the book? The four beasts and four and twenty elders. What they did? Fell down before the lamb. Before the lamb? Before the lamb. And they are all around the throne of God, but they done fell down before the lamb. Amen. And what did he say, son? Having every one of them hearts. Read it. And golden vows full of odor. Read it, son. Which are the prayers of saints. And what is that? And they sung a new song. They sung a new song? Saying. What they said? Thou art worthy to take the book. You're worthy to take the book? And to open the seals thereof. What you say, son? For thou was slain. Thou was what? Thou was slain. Thou was slain? And has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred. Redeemed us to God. Sound like to me, you're a mediator. That's what it sound like to me now. What did he say, son? And tongue. What? And people. What is that? And nation. Read it, son. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. Read it, son. And we shall reign on the earth. Read it, son. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels. He said, I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels. What they say? Round about the throne. What they doing, twin? And the beasts and the elders. What they doing? And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. That's a lot of angels, y'all. That's a lot. That's a lot of angels. What did it say, son? Saying with a loud voice. What did they say? Worthy is the Lamb. Is that what they said around? Look, they round the Father's throne talking about worthy is the Lamb. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hold it now. They around the Father's throne saying to the Lamb. Yes, Somebody said, well, he won't give his glory to enough. He sure won't. He won't give it to you. Do you understand? My God, man, but you better honor his son. Amen. He, because he declared, if you don't honor my son, you ain't honoring me. Right. He that honoreth not the son, honoreth not the father that hath sent him. Amen. Hallelujah to God. What did he say around, what they doing around the throne between him? Worthy is the lamb that was slain. That was slain. To receive power. To receive power. And riches. And riches. And wisdom. What did he say, son? And strength. Read it. And honor. Read it. And glory. 
And glory. And glory. They say he don't get no glory. And glory. What did he say? And blessing. What did he say? And every creature which is in heaven. Read it. And on the earth. Read it. And under the earth. What happened? And such as are in the sea. What happened to And him? all that are in them heard I saying. Heard I say what? Blessing. Blessing. And honor. And honor. And glory. And glory. And power. And power. Be unto him that sitteth upon the throne. Wait a minute. Blessing, honor, glory, power be unto him that sit where? Sitteth upon the throne. Who was on the throne? One was on the throne and that was the father right here. Amen. But it didn't stop with the one that's on the throne. What else does it say, twin? And unto the lamb forever and ever. Amen. And unto the lamb. And unto the lamb. No, just to the one that's on the throne. And unto the lamb. How for how long? Forever and ever. No, up to the cross. Forever and ever. Let God be true and every man a liar. Right. The word of God is right. Amen. It ain't nothing you can say with, to this stuff but just amen. amen. It's right. Let me show y'all something that's sad. Now all this is sad, but this is real sad. I want y'all to listen to this. Geno has Ecclesiastes 4.8 in his book. Trying to justify his teaching about the Godhead. Listen to this. Ecclesiastes 4.8. He writes. There is one. He got in parentheses. Not two or three. There is one alone. And there is not a second. Yea. He. Have neither child nor brother. Saints of God. This is the height of deception. Amen. There's one alone and there's not a second in Ecclesiastes. It's not dealing with God. No, sir. It ain't dealing with the Godhead at all. No, sir. Ecclesiastes 4.8 that this brother wrote to justify his damnable doctrine has nothing to do with the Godhead. No, sir. It's dealing with unity. It's dealing with you not being alone. With the man not being alone. This is what that's dealing with. That ain't got nothing to do with the Godhead. Amen. This is the height of deception. I'm telling you, the spirit of Antichrist inspired both these books. Amen. Give me Ecclesiastes, brother, four. Let's get the verse. I want you to start at verse seven. Ecclesiastes four and at verse seven. This is the height of deception. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, and we're going to start reading at verse 7. And let's see, is this dealing with the Godhead? Ecclesiastes 4, 7 said what? Then I returned. He said, I returned. And I saw vanity under the sun. I saw vanity under the sun. There's one alone. There's how many? There's one alone. There's one alone. And there's not a second. You've got somebody here that's alone. And there's nobody with them. That ain't dealing with God. No, sir. That's not dealing with God. There is one alone, and there's not a second. What else did it say? Yea, he had neither child nor brother. He took that scripture. There's not a second. He don't have a child nor brother. He trying to make that God. To try to say God ain't got no son. This is sad now. I'm going to tell you, this is sad. Read it, twin. Yea, he have neither child nor brother. He have neither child nor brother. Yet, there, it, yet is there no end of all his labor. Now listen. You've got one alone. He don't have a child. He don't have no brother. He's by himself. Yet he's laboring. He's working. He's working. The Bible said there's no end of all his labor. So here it is, I'm by myself, I don't have no child, I don't have no brother, I'm just working, 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 working. For what? Why am I working like this? I'm by myself. Do you understand? This ain't dealing with God. This is trying to give us wisdom here. Amen. What did it say, son? Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. He just working, 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 ain't got no child, ain't got no brother, ain't got nobody to spend all what he's making. And he ain't even satisfied with his riches. That ain't dealing with God. Neither is he satisfied with riches. What did he say? Neither saith he. Neither saith he. For whom do I labor? 
He never said for whom do I labor. I'm by myself. Why am I working like this? What did he say? And bereave my soul of good. And bereave my soul of good. Why am I working like this? I'm by myself. My God, man, it makes no sense. What did he say, son? This is also vanity. This is also vanity. What the next verse say? Yea, it is a sore travail. It's a sore travail. Read it. Two are better than one. <laughs> this is dealing with not being by yourself. Unity. Two is better than one. You remember what he said? That's one alone. That's not a second. He had neither child nor brother. Two is better than one. What did he say, twin? Because they have a good reward for their labor. They can enjoy their labor. Two is better than one. Read it, twin. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Read it, twin. For if they fall. If they fall. The one will lift up his fellow. So this is dealing with God. So if God falls, who's going to lift him up? It makes no sense. It's the height of deception. This is not dealing with God. The Bible said two is better than one. Read it. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Read it, son. For if they fall. If they fall. The one will lift up his fellow. The one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. What is that? For he have not another to help him up. So God can fall and nobody can help God up. It's foolishness. What did it say, twin? Again. Again. If two lie together. If two lie together. Then they have heat. They can have heat. But how can one be warm alone? That's right. That's right. What did it say, twin? And if one prevail against him. If one prevail against him. Two shall withstand him. Two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. This is dealing with not being alone. This is dealing with unity. Where there's unity, there's strength. This is not dealing with the Godhead at all. This is the height of deception. Y'all need, instead of hating Brother Murray, you need to thank God for Brother Murray. That's what you need to be doing. Genesis goes on to write, Jesus Christ is God Almighty. No more son. But all spirit. He got flesh and blood in parentheses. But all spirit. He said God is a spirit. He holds the title son of God. So there's no more son. God is simply holding the title son of God. Saints of God. I say to y'all. Don't believe this trash. Amen. This. Book, these, give me First John 2.18 bro. These two books. Let me show you the spirit that inspired him. Give me 1 John, brother, chapter 2, and at verse 18. All thy getting get understand. 1 John 2, 18. What did it say to him? Little children. Little children. It is the last time. It's the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come. You've heard who shall come? Antichrist shall come. What you say? Even now are there many Antichrists. Saints of God, there's many Antichrists. They, look here. Do not look for him to come today with horns spitting fire. These antichrists, they got Bibles in their hand. They got on Zoot Soups and Stacey Adams. Do you understand? They, they dress down to a T. They got Stacey's on and they are saying that they are apostles. Genesis is not an apostle and Johnson was not an apostle. No apostle talk the way these men talk. No. Do you understand? I know how a God sent preacher supposed to talk because you're looking at one. And the way these men talk, no God sent preacher is going to talk like that. Nobody that's got the Holy Ghost going to speak against Jesus Christ. It's not possible. 1 Corinthians 12 and 3, brother, we coming to a close. These men are not apostles. You folks that got caught up in a whirlwind of deception. Instead of hating me, you ought to thank God for me. 
1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 3, twin said, what? Well, for I give you to understand. I give you to understand. That no man speaking by the Spirit of God. No man speaking by the Spirit of God. Calleth Jesus a curse. That's right. Amen. And no man speaking by God's Spirit go speak against Jesus. That's right. And that no man can say that Jesus is the, is the Lord. No man can honor, recognize, and say Jesus is Lord, but how? But by the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what's lacking. Amen. Holy Ghost. Amen. Holy Ghost is what's lacking. The only way these followers are going to follow this doctrine, you can't have the Holy Ghost, man. No, sir. How in the world you got the Spirit of Christ, but you can follow somebody who's speaking against Christ? No, sir. It, it, it's not happening. When I hear a man let, uh, tell me the son didn't get out the grave, my spiritual antennas go straight up. Right. Says something ain't right here. Oh, no. uh, pastor. <laughs> pastor, holy pastor. Do you understand? Amen. Not walk out, run out. Amen. You better save yourselves from this untoward generation. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we're going to come to a close. But I want y'all to understand, I took this approach tonight to try to help you. I want y'all to understand what you're following is not according to the scripture. Now, Johnson is, Johnson is dead. He's gone. My prayer is he repented of all this foolishness before he closed his eyes. That's my prayer. That he repented of this before he died, before he left this earth. Because you know what the Bible says? He that speaketh against the Son of Man, it can be forgiven. God will forgive him. But he's going to repent of it and turn from it. Do you understand? But now Genesis is very much alive. Now, I, I say to my brother, if you, if you stand behind your teachings, if you stand behind your writings, then you ought to have enough courage to sit down in a chair and let's discuss it. Let's, the Bible said, come let us reason together. You got the souls of the people hanging in the balance my God, man, you don't allow your pride to get in the way of the salvation of people. If you got confidence in what you're teaching, you ought to have enough courage to pull up a chair and let's discuss it. Amen. Elder Murray is open, available, and willing. This thing was not done in a corner. I'm open, I'm available, and I'm willing. Let's discuss your writing. If Johnson was here, I'll call him to the table. You see, loud talk, boastful talk don't mean nothing to me. The only thing that matters is what's written in this book. Because when you get through yelling and screaming and, and, and trying to talk so bold and bad, then I'm going to whisper to you and say, oh, now read what you just said. <laughs> He's not the son of God. No more. Okay, all right. All right. You done? Now read that. And you know what? You can't read it. So loud talk don't mean nothing. Do you understand? It don't mean it don't mean nothing. What's in this book is what matters. I beseech you, brothers and sisters, go back to the Bible. Go back to the Bible. At any time, my brother gets the courage to sit down and discuss these things. I'm willing. I'm available. I'm I'm ready whenever whenever he get the courage to do so. Let's discuss it according to the scripture for the sake of the people. Amen. Not only do I want to discuss this, but I got a lot I want to discuss. I want to discuss the apostleship. I, I want to talk about baptism in the name of Jesus Christ without believing in the Son of God. What good is it? That's a lot that I want to talk about because I see a big game being ran on the people. That's what I see. Do you understand? And people have their audacity to think that I want to be like these men. I don't want to be like no man that I see according to this Bible that took on the spirit of an antichrist. I don't, don't tell me I want to be like them. You don't know me. I'm striving to be like the one guy out the grave. Not the ones that headed to the grave. I thank God for you. Let me remind you all. We're live Every Wednesday night, every Sunday, on YouTube and Facebook, both at the same time. 
We're live every Sunday around about 12.45 Central Time. That's 1.45 Eastern Time. We're live every Wednesday night around about 7.50 Central Time. That's 8.50 Eastern Time. Facebook and YouTube at the same time. On every first Wednesday night of the month, the phone line here will be open during Bible study. During Bible study. You will be able to call this number right here during our Bible study and ask questions live over the air. Now let me say to the brothers, I'm not going to contend with you and go back and forth. If you call and ask a question, we're going to answer according to the scripture. If you don't believe the scripture, don't waste my time. Do you understand? Like I said, the other, 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 other service. If you rather what Johnson said, go to the grave and yell and scream and see can he hear you. But if you believe the Bible, you're welcome to call. And we'll